Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. So in our previous session, we have discussed about the introduction to the deadlocks. So how the deadlock situation may occur and the conditions that may lead to the deadlock. So in today's session, we'll go with the one more concept in the deadlock that is deadlock detection. So by using one uh, graph that is called as a resource allocation graph, so we can decide that may lead to the deadlock or not. In not in all the cases, so there, there is also a different cases. So we'll discuss all the things in today's session, right? So deadlock detection. Deadlock detection. So in order to detect the deadlock, whether the process leading to the deadlock situation, so we need to draw some graph called resource allocation graph. So because mainly just waiting for the resources which are held by the another process we are getting the deadlock situation right so if any process is waiting for one resource which is already held by the another process right that we call it as a deadlock so that's why so we need to draw the resource allocation graph and by using that resource allocation graph we can say that whether the situation may lead to the deadlock or not right so our concept is a resource allocation graph. So here the name itself indicates, so this resource allocation graph will be having the complete details about the resources. So it contains a details of resources so what are the details here so resources which have been allocated which are available that means so we are having some resources some resources will be allocated to some process to to execution for the for its execution and some process will be in the available that means any other process any other process can avail the resources free resources right so in order to get the details of these resources which are being allocated and which are available so we are going with this resource allocation graph so before drawing the graph so we have to see a few points so whenever you saw this graph the two things will get in the mind that is vertices and edges vertices and edges right so in this resource allocation graph we are having the vertices of two categories one is for process so one vertex represents the process another vertex represents the resources resources and process is represented using circle circle so process is represented using circle and similarly the resources will be represented using rectangle using rectangle so p1 this is a process and r1 this is a resource and both are the vertex right both are the vertex so process and resource now again the resources may have a single instance or a multiple instances right so the instance instance of resource represented using dot dot so if there is a single instance so we'll be having only single dot and if you if the resources are having a double instance multiple instance so we'll use a multiple dots for example so see i'll write here 
so this is a r1 and i will give one dot that implies r1 is having only one instance and see this is a second one i'll go with the r2 i'll give a two dots that means r2 is having two instances right so i'll write t and r right so this is single instance multiple that means here two instances two instances that means two process will be there i mean two instances will be there so two instances will be allocated to different process right so this is a basic thing so that means vertex vertex so we are talking about the resource allocation graph so if we are talking about the graph so the pictorial representation of all the resources which are available and allocated will be represented in terms of vertices and edges and here we are having a two types of vertices process and resource and process is represented with a circle resource is represented with a rectangle and if coming to the resource there might be a chance of having a single resource and multiple instances okay single instance and multiple instances so coming to the single instance we will represent with a single dot inside the rectangle and we are having a multiple instances so we will count the instances and we represent each instance with a dot symbol so in this we are representing r2 with a two dots that implies resource 2 is having a two instances that can be allocated for two process right now coming to the edges so here the edges is also having a two categories one is assigned edge another one is requested edge see this is all about vertices i will erase this one see i i'll write here okay edge is also two categories one is assigned edge requested edge so that means assigned edge means the resource is already allocated to the process and requested means if the process is requesting for the resources right for example coming to the assign i erase this one hope you understood this one so i erase this one and i will show you what exactly how we can represent the uh, assigned edge and uh, requested edge so let it be p is a process and r is a resource and here the edge is a directional unidirectional and c if there is a unidirection direction from r to p r to p that we call it as a assigned edge assigned edge that implies r is allocated that means a resource r is allocated to process p that means already allocated and similarly p and r and if the edge is from process to resource the edge is from process to resource this is called requested edge requested edge so these are the two category of edges right so one is a assigned edge another one is a requested edge so if it is an assigned edge the arrow mark should be from the resource towards the process and if it is a requested edge the arrow mark is from process towards the resource right so now so this is all about vertices and edges so now we are having the vertices that means a number of process resources and also we are having some edges now we'll see one example so we'll draw the resource allocation graph right so so first we'll draw the resource allocation graph for the resources with a single instance so there might be a chance that resources can have the multiple instances now we'll see so 
P1 P2 R1 R2 right now C R1 is allocated to P1 R2 is allocated to P2 right so P1 is requesting R2 and P2 is requesting R1 okay so this is a small graph right so P1 holds the resource R1 similarly P2 holds the resource R2 and P1 requesting R2 to finish its execution and P2 requesting R1 to finish its execution and here R1 and R2 both are the single instances single instances I'll write here so uh, single instance resource with a single instance this example and here if a cycle forms in the graph If the cycle forms in the graph, see you can see P1, P2 and again P1. So this is a cycle, right? So P1, R2, P2, R1, P1. So this is one cycle, right? So if such a cycle forms a graph, that implies it will lead to deadlock definitely that will lead to the deadlock that means see two points we have to remember if the resource allocation graph is drawn for the example that means each resource is having only single instance so then if the resource allocation graph forms any cycle that implies it will lead to the deadlock otherwise that means if resource allocation graph doesn't forms a cycle that means there is a no deadlock there is no deadlock 100% right so this is only applicable for resources with a single instance resources with a single instance right so for example consider the same resource allocation graph with the two instances okay with the two instances so obviously if P1 needs R2, there is just another instance. So this one, okay. So this one will be this one and automatically this instance will be allocated to P1. That means if it is a multiple instance, If it is a multiple instance that means if the resource allocation graph is drawn for the resources with the multiple instance and again if a cycle forms in the graph I'll get without confusion right so multiple instances then we it is not sure that it may lead to deadlock it may lead to deadlock that means that is not a confirm that is not a hundred percent right so it may lead to the deadlock or it may not lead to the deadlock for example you can see the same thing so it forms a cycle right again it forms a cycle but here there is a multiple instances one instance is available so p1 simply p1 can uh, avail the instance of resource r2 so that doesn't forms the deadlocks right that may not lead to the deadlock so if if the if the resources are having the multiple instances and if you draw the resource allocation graph and in the if a cycle if a cycle forms in the graph whichever i mean considering the multiple instances 
automatically it may lead to the deadlock it is not confirmed that it may lead to the deadlock and coming to the if it doesn't form if the cycle doesn't forms obviously there will be no deadlock that doesn't lead to the deadlock so that we have to remember so we can say that 100% the situation is having the deadlock only when a cycle forms in the single instance resources right so this is about our resource allocation graph so i will summarize the points so this resource allocation graph can be drawn for two categories one is resources with single instance so still if you are having any uh, doubts so that will be clarified right see resources with multiple instances so in these two categories we can draw the graph so one is a resources with a single instance another one is resources with a multiple instance so in both the cases see one is rag forms cycle reg forms cycle so reg means resource allocation graph so if reg forms a cycle in this single instance deadlock is detected and here may or may not deadlock so only one uh, by watching or by getting this cycle we can't decide that there will be a deadlock and uh, no cycle in reg no deadlock and here also the same thing no cycle in reg no deadlock right so these are the points for single instance and these are the points for multiple instances right hope you understood this one right now right so i think uh, all your queries have been covered okay so how to detect this deadlock uh, situation if the resources with the multiple instances so we are having a, another approach for this one so if the resources having the single instance this is the approach and we can draw the resource allocation graph and we have to check for the cycle and we can decide whether the deadlock is available or not i mean it leads to deadlock or not and but here we are having the another approach so as of now we'll stop the uh, session and in our next session we'll discuss about the process so for this particular resources with the multiple instances right so hope you understood this one and if you are having any doubts regarding this one feel free to post your doubts in the comment section definitely i'll try to clarify all your doubts and if you re really enjoyed my session like my session uh, share my session with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel thanks for watching thank you very much